Uh, thank you, uh, uh, gentlemen of the press, uh, for uh, for uh, inviting me for this uh, interview this morning. Um, you will all recall that in 2016, uh, in on November in November 2015, the president, President Muhammadu Buhari, the central bank, and some state governors went to Kebbi State to launch the rice farming, wet, wet season rice farming, rice farming. Since then, we have seen an astronomical growth in the number of farmers who have been going into rice farming and our paddy production has gone up also quite exponentially. Between 2015 and also now, we have also seen an astronomical rise in the number of companies corporates and individuals that are setting up mills, integrated mills, and even small mills in the various areas. And the Central Bank of Nigeria and the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development has been at the center of not just only encouraging the, the production of rice in Nigeria, but also funding these farmers by giving them loans to acquire, to buy seedlings or to buy fertilizer or to buy some of the herbicides that they need for, for their rice production. Um, recently, uh, and this is the absolute truth, um, yeah, you will all rec recall also that we have been embarking on a program where we're saying if you are involved in the, in the business of smuggling or dumping or rice in the country, we, cl we close your account in the banking industry. Although that is coming on quite effectively, about, about two weeks before the border closure, the chairman of the Rice Processors Association called me. He, incidentally, he owns Umza Rice in Kano. He called me and said that um, all the rice millers and processors are carrying in their warehouses nothing less than 25,000 metric tons of milled rice in their warehouses. That this rice has been unsold because of the smuggling and dumping of rice through Republic of Benin and other border posts that we have in the country. And that he would want us to do something about it. Secondly, we also have some of some members of the Poultry, poultry Association uh, of Nigeria who also complained that they have thousands of crates of eggs that they could not sell. Together with even some of the processed chicken that they could not sell, also arising from the problem of smuggling and dumping of poultry products into Nigeria. I am aware also, or I was told also, that after some meetings that were held, in addition to those engagements that we also held, CBN, with, with, the, with the president, the border was closed subsequently. Gentlemen of the press, a week after those, the borders were closed, the same Rice, Rice Millers Association, Rice Farmers Association, Rice Millers Association called to tell us that, listen, that all the rice that they had in their warehouses have all been sold. Indeed, a lot of people have been depositing money in their accounts and they're even telling them, please hold on, don't even pay money yet until we finish, until we finish processing your rice. The poultry association themselves have also come to say, listen, that they have sold all their eggs, they have sold all their processed chicken, and that demand is rising. So when you ask what is the benefit, the benefit of the border closure on the economy of Nigeria are just used two products, poultry and rice. The benefit is that it has helped to create jobs for our people. It has helped to bring our rice milling, integrated rice mills that we have in the country, also to bring them back into business again, and they are making money. Our rural communities are, are bubbling because there's activity, because rice, rice farmers are able to sell their paddy. The poultry business is also doing well, and also maize farmers who, pro who produce maize from which feeds are produced are also doing business. These are the benefits. Gentlemen, we are not saying that, um, that the border should be closed in perpetuity, but that before the border can be reopened, there must be concrete engagements with countries that are involved in using their ports and their countries as landing ports for bringing in goods that are smuggled into Nigeria. That engagement must be held. 
so that we agree on the basis under which what are the kind of products they can land in their country because if those products they land in their country is meant for their own local consumption it's understandable but the fact that those products are landed in their country and then transshipped or smuggled into Nigeria is something that I'm sure you all agree as Nigerians we should not allow to happen because it undermines our economic policy, it undermines our own desire to ensure that industries are alive and jobs are created in Nigeria. That would be my response to this. Thank you. Thank you.